Hey, for those of you that are new here, I'm Tanya, and this is my husband, Dave, and we're Let's Turn It Up World. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Yes, welcome to our channel. So Dave and I, we've been living in our Winnebago Echo for mm, full time for just a little over a year now. And we traveled in that year about 15,000 miles and touched 30 states, which is pretty impressive. Oh, it was an amazing journey. So we've learned a lot about the true cost of what it takes to live full time uh, in the RV life. And so we should just kick this party off right now and get started. Hey, if you haven't done so, take a second and hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss one of our upcoming adventures. All right, let's get into it. And let's start with what our biggest cost would have been, which is the camping overnight cost. And I'm gonna let Dave take this one because he did all the bookings. <laughs> And of course, camping overnight costs, we're talking about essentially like RV parks, RV resorts, campground costs, things like that. Of course, many places we stayed at, if we boondock or something like that, those were free. Uh, but we tried to overall have an average cost per night of $35 a night. That was part of our targeted budget. We ended up actually at $32 a night. So, so pretty good. Not bad. Not, not bad for our first year. Exactly. Right, we had to boondock a fair amount to kind of bring down some of the cost of the some of the more expensive RV resorts that we'll go into a little bit later. But that actually breaks down to at an annual amount. Uh, now we have, hold on you guys, yeah. we actually have a sheet for this we put together because you can't remember everything. So we wrote That's it right. down. There's a sheet here. <laughs> <laughs> and the annual amount was $11,695. Yeah. Right, and that breaks down to a monthly rate of $975. And of course that equates to that average of $32 a night. Now we stayed in a variety of locations throughout the year. We, and we boondocked a fair amount. I'm talking, we boondocked at some BLM lands and some other locations. Uh, and also fair amounts of like parking lots, Walmarts, you know, Iowa 80, Wall Drug. Right. Hmm. Wall yeah, Wall Drug, Drug was great. That was a special one. Yeah, we actually right. stayed there for our birthday. Exactly. That was our uh, birthday special. We wanted to save some of our budget for gifts. Absolutely. Right? Does that work? Maybe? That's a smart move. Does that uh, work? That does work you for buy me. buy that? Because we got some pretty good gifts. Yeah, we did. <laughs> now, we took full advantage of Harvest Host as much as we could during our trip as well, right? I know, absolutely. And Harvest Host, if you're not familiar with that, you should get on board. It's a really cool way to stay at places like wineries or even with families. It's just a lot of fun. Right, and I can't forget the uh, bison and alpaca farms we say that. Those were amazing. Those were a lot of fun. Yeah. And they're definitely cool, in my opinion. Oh, like, yeah. really, really cool. Like, I was feeding those bison just kind of like, hey, and they were giving me their kisses with their sloppy right, the, wet the tongues. long tongue, kind of so wrapping around. Around, yeah. <laughs> <I know. laughs> now we driveway parked for free at family and friends when we could, which the term for it is called mooch docking. That's right. And nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> and one of the coolest things we did was we were able to stay for free two weeks during the filming of a show that Dave and I were involved in called RV Unplugged. Now RV Unplugged is a show that's, I guess you would say, survivor meets amazing race. And so what I'll do is I'll put a link in the description box below if you want to check out the trailer for that. But if you do, make sure you vote for us. That's right. Watch we are show. contestants, everyone. We're so contestants. go over there and vote, vote for, for us. us. <laughs> now, by doing this, this truly helped keep our overall camping costs down. Now, however, we also stayed in quite a few RV resorts and RV parks while we were on the road. We did. And those are pretty expensive. And in addition, we also went to some of the more popular national parks like yellowstone national park yeah right grand teton oh that that was my favorite well both oh. of those were just oh, equally as beautiful so so beautiful so incredible and of course the black hills as well and we stayed in rv resorts and really all of those locations well a campground in grand teton but overall it was an expensive visit for us in terms of nightly rates yeah they can be costly i mean they're probably big tourist attractions as well those national parks so yeah i can see that for sure but it was well worth it yeah absolutely Speaking of Yellowstone, you remember one of our favorite RV resources to stay at, Grizzly RV Park? I mean, it was super cool. So many cool amenities for our gears. Oh, no, it's a great spot. Just a great home base if you're yeah. visiting Yellowstone. Totally agree with you. Now, definitely not cheap, right? Over $100 a night. That pushed our rate up for sure, uh, but it was well worth it. Absolutely well worth it. Cha-ching! <laughs> now, because we were going so kind of crazy across the country, yeah. right, we couldn't take advantage of any monthly rates at RV resorts. But when we got back to Las Vegas, which is kind of like our home base here, yeah. right, we 
we were staying for a 30 day period. So we did actually get a monthly rate at an RV resort outside Las Vegas, $815 a month plus the utilities. Yeah. And that really did save us some money as well to keep costs lower. Oh yeah, for sure. Like those weekly rates, those daily rates, sometimes when you're booking things and it has to be last minute because that's how we are. We're on the road trying to hit right. 30 states. The cost gets a lot higher. But if you can find a place and set it on for 30 days, you will save so much more money that way. Okay, so I think it's time to move on to the next category. Moving on, moving right. on. <laughs> and this next category ended up much higher than we initially had budgeted for. Yeah. Um, and it was really kind of unforeseen circumstances as well because prices spiked up. And of course, we're talking about gasoline prices. No mistaken on those gas prices <laughs> nowadays. Inflation, inflation. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And as Tanya mentioned before, we traveled about 15,000 miles through 30 different states. So we were driving a lot. And we're in a Ford Transit uh, chassis in the Echo, of course, which got about 13 miles to the gallon. So overall, in terms of when you kind of did all the math there and did all the tracking, our gasoline was on an annual basis, I'm looking at the cheat sheet again, was $4,700, a monthly amount of $392. And that really yeah. was quite a bit above what we initially had expected oh, big time. today. Absolutely big time. I mean, they just, they. I feel like the gas prices, even during that time, they spiked. Oh, it was painful. So, so you had like your your set focus, you were trucking along the way, you knew what gas prices were, and all oh, of a yeah. sudden, it was like right in the middle of all that, it was just like, boom! Oh, they went so high. Also, depending on the states you're in, you kind of, you, it's kind of more expensive in certain states and certain areas and yeah. it would drop down, but we hit some pretty high prices. Yeah, we try to use a little bit of a cheat sheet, like where are the cheaper gas exactly. prices so we can figure we can make it through this state <laughs> before we get to the next one. We can get gas in the next state and that's gonna be a little bit cheaper than this one. So, I know. You know. We had all kinds of ways to figure out how to save money, but at the end of the day, the prices went, woo! Some expensive fill up. Hell yeah. So we all have to eat, you know, to survive in this world, you have to eat. So we need to talk about the groceries and the restaurant costs. Now, Dave and I, we tend to, we try to cook as much as we can inside and outside of our rig, which definitely helps cut back on some of the costs. But like gas, inflation has disrupted yeah, that as well because grocery prices have in our opinion doubled it's almost equivalent to going out to eat anyway <laughs> yeah no, it's been crazy it has been crazy so let me just tell you quickly about our grocery costs which when the spike happened as well so overall our grocery costs are eight thousand three hundred dollars for groceries for the year which equates about six hundred and ninety two dollars per month right and it does sound like a lot but i gotta say Still well worth it. Plus, I mean, you do an amazing job, babe, cooking oh, in such a small you. space. I mean, I love you gotta it. hand it to Tanya. Just does an incredible job in desert snow. Yeah, and this guy right here, I gotta toot it. We gotta throw it right back <laughs> at Dave because when it comes to grilling, he's like the grill master. I mean, we could eat steaks and grilled onions and he just makes them with so much flavor. Well, he's so like the grill like master. like that post oak little smokiness to it. Well, I do. And that's why it's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> And we did also take advantage of some of the local restaurants, you know, places where we know they have like that authentic vibe and we didn't want to miss out on an opportunity since we were there. Right. So we spent about $3,000 at restaurants and other places uh, eating out. And that was about $250 per month. So, you know, overall things are not cheap, but at the same time, um, you gotta eat. All right, so now it's time for everyone's favorite topic, right? <laughs> right? RV insurance, of course, and RV maintenance. Woo, woo, exciting <laughs> times, boys. Right, so so the RV insurance for our Winnebago Echo uh, was about $1,100 for the year, which mm -hmm. makes which was about $92 a month. That also included, that includes roadside assistance in that as well, which fortunately we did not have to use. But important to have. The year, right, Peace. and exactly, yeah. very, very important to have. Uh, and then on the RV maintenance side, fortunately, our rig uh, was under warranty. Brand new. Brand new. Right, right. So thank the Lord for that. Thank the right. Lord for that. Because we did get some things, uh, <laughs> some, some, some of the warranty work done on it for yeah, sure. A lot. Right, exactly. <laughs> Brand new. Right. Brand but, new rigs. But because of that, our RV maintenance is really more around oil changes and things like that. So about $600 for the year or $50 per month. Mm. You know, like during the year, we actually bought some accessories for the RV. As, yeah. you know, f new RVers at that time on the road, we probably bought some accessories that we didn't need as well because we didn't know what we needed until right, no, we true. actually tried it. 
but we did get quite a few things that we did need. I'm talking things like, and I wrote this down, yeah. like the bike rack, which yeah, is a really big one. deal. That was important. Yeah, we used our, to store the bikes like in the in our garage space, yeah. and that was a pain, right? Because you had the bikes at the bottom, and then everything on top, you, you had to take everything out and then put everything back in yeah. to get the bikes out. Like Tetris. He had to do it. Was Tetris. The, it was yeah. like playing Tetris in that garage until we got the bike rack, and now it's not like playing Tetris. It's just like playing boxes <laughs> I, I bought a piece of a bike rack so maybe spent a little too much there but yeah but that's great just like the compressor yeah I went that's on that really too. important to yeah. have and i think you got a really good compressor that makes us feel safe on the road especially if we're traveling to places right. over boondocking that's you know true. sometimes you may have to let the air out of the tires so you don't get stuck and then you have a compressor so you can put them back in when you need it right. probably the most amazing um uh <sighs> is the kitty screens the kitty right screens. i knew yeah. you're gonna go there yes exactly. our cat kitty screens were I felt like those are really important. We got some custom made kitty screens for the cats. So this way, when they're traveling with us, some of those screens are pretty sensitive and a cat's claws will shred right through them. So the kitty screens that we have prevent them from doing that. We also got something which was the dehumidifier. And for right. us, we do a lot of winter camping. And so having that small dehumidifier prevents, you know, you get those sweaty walls. And so having a dehumidifier prevents you from having those sweaty walls. Don't wanna have the sweaty walls. Don't have the sweaty walls. No one can resist my sweaty balls. <laughs> All right, we also got like an induction cooktop, a Berkey, and all right, getting cutting to the chase here, that cost was, RV accessories was $1,500 for the year uh, or $125 per month. And yes, I know it seems a bit high, but it's our, also our first year in the RV. So we're trying to create the accessories or get the things that we think we'll need. So this year, I'm sure that price will go way down. I hope, right? I hope so. And we also did make some pretty major mods yeah. for the RV and they, they were expensive. Yes, right? they were. Now they, these were discretionary, but ones we felt were important Very. for our enjoyment. Because we like to, to go off grid, yeah. do winter camping in the snow. And so our most expensive mod was getting the Quigley lift. Yes. Right, and the Falcon larger tires mm -hmm. on there as well. And we did some other mods as well inside yeah. to kind of more personalize the rig overall. And this is a pretty big number. Overall, our annual cost was $9,500 for all of our mods that we did to the rig. And that monthly is $792 a month. Yeah, that was a pretty, pretty big one. But right. I definitely feel you're right. It was really important for us to have that comfortable capability, especially since we do like to go off grid or boondocking. And it can be pretty low. You know how nervous I was no, before I we got it. And now, ah, I'm happy as right. a clam. And we do hope next year that cost goes way down. Oh, it will. Unless you plan on getting another lift. Yeah, well, she's talking, it's going way down. Unless you plan on getting another lift. No, no, no more of that. <laughs> now, one of the things, you know, Dave and I really love taking advantage of are the activities and entertainment in different areas. You know, when you're going to local spots, there's some fun things that you can do that you don't want to miss that you may not happen to find anywhere else. So I'm just going to break it down for you really quick and throw out the price of what that costs for us. So that was $2,800 for the year or $233 per month. And we did a lot of great things. Like remember the ATV uh, through Custer uh, yeah, State no, Park in the Black cool. Hills? No, absolutely, very cool. And you're gonna splurge on things if you go to some local destinations, like in Virginia City, you yes. had that, those amazing theaters those there. Those theaters. We had to do it. We right? really did have to do that. Or like the hot springs in Idaho. Yeah. I mean, that was kind of fun. I mean, we could have got Mike Nathan and the exactly. hot springs. And, and, and of course, one of the big ones was the Grand Canyon Railway. Yes. Right, that was a bit of a splurge. Yeah, and we do like to watch movies when we're kind of back at the rig just to kind of relax but you need streaming services for that so that's another big added cost for us um, as well that we had in there so that was yeah, I felt overall we did a pretty good job there we did right with, every, with all the different options now we should talk about rallies and shows that we attended during the year good point um, of course we went to the uh, Winnebago Grand National Rally which was a lot of fun that was so much right. fun so glad we went to that and then the Hershey RV show in Pennsylvania, what of course. What a big show. Right. It's a big it's show. It's a big show. A giant show, Gigantic. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but well worth it. We had a great time at both of those. Overall, the cost for those were about $500 for the year, or $42 a month. So yeah. um, probably have about the same next year. I'm sure we'll do it again next year. Oh, heck yeah. Right, so, and maybe even do some more shows. Yeah, I mean, maybe maybe the gas prices will come down, so it'll be a nice little balance for that. Right. But we shall see, or maybe they'll go even higher. I'd like, to, I'd like to do some overland shows or something like that. I think that'd be cool. That's a good idea. Right? 
So Dave and I being full-time travel content creators, we work from the road. So what's really important to us is having the access of the internet and the cell phone at all times, which is very important to us. So the cost for that is $2,700 uh, for the year or $225 per month. And that includes us having our cell phones, our hotspots so that we're able to access different places, especially from remote places that we need to have access to. Uh, and we did later on in the year, we got Starlink. Yeah, we did get Starlink, yeah. right? And so that may end up replacing, who knows, maybe next year. Some of the hotspots. Uh, exactly, so we'll see. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that's probably a good idea because they, they're pretty expensive. And once you run out of that data, you know, it, you... No, it's true. Run out. <laughs> <laughs> Starlink is the best. Not sponsored. <laughs> Good. Now our rigs heat and cooktops run off propane. And we mm -hmm. found that for over the year, we spent about $200 or $17 a month on propane cost. Yes. So not too bad. We do a lot of winter camping as well. We found that in the snow and in the cold, our heating system is incredibly efficient. The insulation. Right? So we didn't actually use as much propane as we initially expected we would. Right. And we have an induction cooktop too. Right. So we try to compensate between using that and trying to stay away from the propane gas for exactly. cooking, which we use the... Yeah, and that makes a big difference. Big difference. Now, along the way, we did buy some like clothing and merchandise oh, yeah. uh, throughout the year, especially for doing things like the winter camping. We may have needed some additional items. Yeah. Um, we didn't pack as much. We packed a lot, right. but not enough right, of well, the right might, stuff. You might see like a cool sweatshirt somewhere. You just gotta get it. Yeah, so or a pair of socks or gloves or, so you So you're know. being so, uh, you're buying things that are very useful. Yeah, which is really rare for you it's to say smart that. For you. Not useful. Very smart you for you. me, the not useful <laughs> stuff. <laughs> but anyway, the cost of uh, that for clothing, we spent about $500 on these type of things over the course of a year yeah. or about $42 for the month. Yeah, not too bad. Okay, now there are a few miscellaneous items we should quickly run through, Yeah, I think, as well. One is tolls. Now, we didn't spend as much on tolls as we would have if we stayed, say, in the Northeast. Yeah. Or down in, say, Florida. Oh, yeah. Right? We were here more in the, the mountain states. So overall, our tolls were about $100 mm -hmm, that's right. uh, for the year. And then, of course, laundry. Everyone's favorite subject. Yeah. Right? Uh, laundry was about 100 bucks. Yeah, about 100 bucks. Yeah, I mean, Not I, too bad. I needed my detergents. And of course, it varied between which facility we're using. I know some folks with the bigger rigs have laundry available to them inside their rig. We don't. So we have to take it to whatever laundromat we go to. And, and those prices definitely varied between the states. Right. And then also memberships and passes. Oh, yeah. Where we spent about $335 the year on those and we have like harvest hose mm -hmm. rv trip wizard from Love rv it. life which yeah. which you find very useful good sam oh yeah of course and of course uh, america the beautiful pass yeah. can't forget that that saved us a lot of money and i feel like those four in particular i feel like you really make your money back oh you know absolutely. whatever you spend on those passes you make them back if you're out there using it as much as we have it's almost paid for itself all right so without further ado the overall total cost for our full-time RV living one-year experiences. Wait for it. Drum roll, please. Drum roll, here we go. Ah, uh, wait, wait, hold on. Give me a beat. Oh, a beat? Yeah, give me a beat You're now. You're serious. I'm serious. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, okay. All right, it's $47,630, or about $3,969 per month. Yeah, that's a lot of money. Yeah. Right. Definitely more than we anticipated. Now that of course includes that, you know, the expensive mods that we did as well. Right. And if we took those mods out, right, the total cost would be thirty-eight thousand one thirty. Right. Right. Or three thousand one seventy-eight. But still more on the expensive side. Yeah. And I think as we go into next year, maybe we can bring them down some. We'll yeah. See. I definitely feel one of the major reasons it is high for us too, especially with the camping. You know, being our first time full time doing it. We spent more time in the campgrounds. We right. got familiar with the boondocking, um, and I think now we're very comfortable with our rig as well as um, you know our experiences. So I yeah. think this year we'll probably do more boondocking than campgrounds, which will bring that cost down significantly. Yeah, no, absolutely. Now, of course, we aren't covering RV depreciation in this video at all. 
just the actual dollars that we spent during the year. Yeah, and we hope this helps you as you plan for your upcoming RV adventures. And we just want to give a big shout out to our Patreon members. Thank you so much for all the tremendous support you've shown us. It truly helps us to put out some of the best content we can. And if you're interested in joining our awesome community, one of the best communities out there, we'll put a link to our Patreon below and we'd really appreciate that. And on that note, we are about to head into some really cool RV adventures and we look forward to seeing y'all on the road.